All right, Heritage Sports, we give our, our live reaction to everything that's going on. As, as you may know, Ed Reed has been uh, fired from the Bethune-Cookman um, University as a football coach. Uh, again, it's a private HBCU out in Florida. Uh, made a big, big uh, social media, just big, big hire, excuse me, a, a hire that generated a lot of social media impressions when they hired the Hall of Famer, one of the greatest safeties of all time, if not the greatest Ed Reed. It was much celebrated throughout the HBC community. Um, it was short lived. And uh, this conversation is going to be about not only what's next, but was the HBCU right? Now, we've covered this is issue quite a bit. We have a few videos on on Ed Reed's hire and now his departure. And of course, we have coverage on the videos that he did as you know, as the coach and what exactly, um, you know, his, his shortfalls were. So it all started uh, about a week ago, uh, probably a week and a half ago, whatever it was. Some whatever Bobby Schmurter would say. <laughs> but he, he basically said Coach Prime was right about everything and that he had done more in a week than a lot of the HBCU administrators had done in a year. Again, he didn't name anybody specifically. We didn't know if he was talking about anybody in Bethune. He didn't know if he was talking about anybody outside of Bethune-Cookman as far as HBCUs go. And H Bethune-Cookman is in the SWAC. So I don't know if he was talking about other SWAC schools and just getting things set up. But he had hit the ground aggressively Got a lot of recruits in and, and was going about his job. But the main sticking point in his first video was, I, I don't have a contract. We're not finalized. We have an agreement in principle. So about an hour or two hours go by that day. And then he uploads another video. He's riding on a golf cart. And in that golf cart, he's saying, look, you know, this facility is trash. Everything is effing trash. And. I shouldn't I should just leave this job because I'm not even under contract. And you could tell he was emotional about it. He felt that he feels that as a Hall of Famer, hey bro, look, y'all should be taking care of me at least. At least have my contract in place and at least clean my office. And we've talked about that as far as a, a dirty office being something that should be aired out, but you know, whether that's an internal thing or not, I think that's Beside the point, what I'm saying is it was very curse laden. He was yelling. He was saying that, you know, he he was just basically saying he feels that things should be better for him and the contract needs to be in place. So that that caused the social media uproar. A lot of HBCU people weighed in. A lot of non HBCU people weighed in. By the way, I'm an HBCU graduate and a college athlete that played football and that played under coaches who, a lot of different coaches, whether they even killed or explosive personality. It seems that Coach Reed, just from my impressions of him, he is an explosive personality. He And you could tell he's a type A kind of coach. And what I mean by that is he is uh, boisterous, combustible, and that you could tell that's how he, he could have been as a player. That's what made him great. And he's now making the transition to being a head coach for the first time, even though he's coached at a few different levels. He's he's uh, to me can be a, a yeller, a curse, curse field. And that that's OK. Some coaches are like that. Some coaches are not. But he put that on the Internet and that that rubbed some people the wrong way with what he said, even though if he was saying truthful things. So fast forward, probably. Not within a day, he releases an apology, a written apology. We've gone over that on this channel as well, what he exactly he said and what was his statement. And basically saying for the second video, he was in the in the wrong, which he was. He was dead wrong for, for what he did as far as not, not so much the cursing. Like I said, it was the the calling things, his own facility trash and and very not not holding himself as a as a college football coach at that particular moment in time especially when you have recruits so he apologizes a few days go by and then all of a sudden 
out of nowhere. And let me back up. We released a video saying after the second video that Ed Reed had the curse laden stuff. We did a video basically saying it's it's fine. This is fixable. And I said I laid out the steps on what would it take for it to be fixable. And the first step was to apologize, which he did. Again, hit the ground running. We could just move on. And for the love of goodness sake, everything above everything else. Bethune, give this man a written contract. This man, that's that's to me his main issue. Give this man his written contract. He wants to be able to sign and, and feel good about doing work at Bethune Cookman. Because as you can see on his social media, on, on his post, whenever you saw him, he had Bethune Cookman gear on. He was repping the Wildcats. I didn't even know Bethune Cookman had the, the hashtag hell Wildcats until I saw Ed Reed wear it all the time. So I, now I know Bethune Cookman held wild, Wildcats. I played in the in the uh in the school for the swag. So again, Bethune Cookman had just moved to the swag, so it's not like we we played them. So they they were in the MEAC. So I had no idea. So I was learning more stuff about the university so much. I knew they were in Florida. I didn't know exactly where they were in Florida. So I found out they were in Daytona. I'm like, okay, cool. So if I go to Daytona, I can stop in and go to the bookstore and actually give them commerce back. That's what I had in my head. Next time I go out to Florida, if I'm in Daytona, I get a chance to go there and experience different things. And now, come today, you're thinking, okay, they're on the right track. Maybe they get the written contract. He apologized. People are coming out in defense of him. Some reporters are like, it's going to be tough. He better win. All this other stuff. But all that goes away if you have a good spring, you go into the next season, and you win. And you implement. Because he was bringing all kind of recruits. And again, this is a recruiting weekend. Ed Reed said that in his departing press conference, it was in the middle of recruiting weekend when they gave him the news. But Thune Cookman, uh, from what we understand, released an email statement. It may have been a draft. It may not have been. But what was communicated to him is they are not going to ratify his contract. I'm going to read what exactly is in the uh, has been reported. So. It said that, and I'm, I'm going to HBCU Game Day. I believe that's what it's called. Oh, excuse me, Premier Sports. Excuse me, I apologize. After weeks of negotiation, Reed has been informed, that means informed by Bethune Cookman, they will not ratify his contract and won't make good on the agreement they had in principle. So, for real, brother got fired on his day off. I mean, dang. Like, dog, I can't even get my contract. I'm just, it's, it's a Saturday. I'm in the middle of recruiting weekend. I'm trying to get all these recruits because I'm an NFL Hall of Fame safety. And then they say, nah, bro, we're not going to honor that contract. We're not going to ratify it. We don't know the assigned reasons. Is it tied to the curse laden video that he apologized for? I, I don't know. But, but I do know Ed Reed apologized. And when in his apology, he said he talked to his athletic director, uh, Director Theus, and that they were good. He said he apologized to him. He said that they he knows what they know. It's an internal process. We're going to work it out. You watch his press conference. They ain't work out bleak. They ain't work out crap. Theus is is basically. K. Reese says you you have thrown me out. And I'm assuming it's based on the video because he kept alluding to a hey, bro. Just because I cursed in the video. We curse up in here. We're adults. We're young adults. We're going to curse. Anyway, my my live reaction to the press conference was a very emotional thing. He didn't start off emotional. It was just he just wanted to set the record straight, set his record, his name. Uh, he wanted to clear his name. He basically saying, no, nah, it ain't no contract breakdown. They just came and told me they are not going to honor my contract. That's what they said. And now I'm I'm out. And it's crazy because the man never got hired in the first place, officially hired in the first place. It's all in principle. Now they fired him. So in the, within the first minute, he was cool. And then he just got really, really emotional. He started slamming things. He had a football in his hand. and He slammed down a laptop, I believe. And it was just, he, he started exhibiting the things he was doing in the previous, the second video that he apologized for, whether he was yelling and cursing a little bit. And the coaches were 
and people in the room that that supported him were basically saying it's okay, it's okay, or uh, you're right, you're speaking truth, something like that. And he mentioned again, he brought in so many recruits, and they dropped this on him in the middle of recruiting weekend. So kids were getting off planes to go to Bethune Cookman, and the head coach that they thought was there for like a month is now gone. It's just a bad look all the way around. But let me get through the rest of the press conference. Again, I said it was emotional. He was cursing. He he wanted to be there. He he started to he started to cry at a, at a particular point, and and he got he composed himself and. You could hear phones just ringing. I mean, throughout, once he started yelling and being emotional, phones just started ringing and ringing and ringing because he was on his IG Live doing his own press conference. And I mean, people are trying to reach him. You could just tell it's people either trying to reach him to stop, turn it off, or, or you made your point, whatever. One voice got through, Deion Sanders. He's talking to somebody, on whoever's recording, and you could tell from the other end, Dion's like, man, put me on the phone with him. Put me on the phone with him. And he's like, man, he's talking. Basically, I don't know what to tell you, bro. It ain't going to happen. So he could not get him on the phone. Apparently, hung, he, hung, he hung up. He hung on the phone. Coach Prime then goes into the IG Live. They click him on at the at, to, to initiate the, the IG share. And you can see Dion there, and he's just talking and talking and talking. Every and then every count, he looks down, he finally sees him, and he says, "What's up, coach?" And you know, and one of the the better moments, it was riveting to me. This is what you want to tell your friends, you know. He was he wasn't telling them to stop what he's doing, as far as the IG live, but he was just saying sometimes you gotta walk away. I understand everything you're going through. I know you. I love you. I want the best for you. Sometimes you just gotta walk away. As soon as Coach Prime got off that IG Live, it recalmed down to me. He said, thanks, Coach, and he walked out. And then for another minute, you didn't see anybody, and then the live stream cut off. Coach Reed did not go back to his office. I'm assuming he just left. Sometimes you just got to leave. And to be fair, at that point, I, I to me as an athletic director, I could see the passion. I could see Ed Reed really wanting to do that. But at that point, there's there's something that he needs to do. I'm, I'm trying to be fair to, to Ed Reed at this point. There is something he needs to do to absolutely have the best outlet because he didn't put himself in the best light. The first minute of the video was great. Like I said, he just wanted to clear his name, which was fine. And then it devolved into... A lot of emotion and he's not the first coach to do that by the way he's not he's not but it just didn't do him any favors uh, to me it just seemed to to me that he needs the the proper outlet it seems that he could be abrasive at times and when you're abrasive that that could rub people the wrong way and you may not be in the workplace but to be fair so and be fairness to Bethune Cookman that's that's something they could have dealt with. But on the other side, it is completely and utterly ridiculous to, to have this man be informed of this during recruiting weekend. If you had a big problem with the video a week ago, all this should have transpired a week ago. Like, I get it. You know, the timing's never, never the best. But in the middle of recruiting weekend, you could have waited to Monday. You could have waited to Tuesday after the weekend goes, I mean, I get it. You may not want him to go through all that work, but that's what the last week was, was for. So you didn't honor this man's contract. You didn't have it in place and have it signed before he started working. If to me in the future, if the, if you have an agreement in principle, that's great. You want to announce it. That's great. That man cannot be on campus or that woman cannot be on campus. That person cannot be on campus. That to me, that's just a bar none rule. All right, because you, you're out there embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing the the good name that you you had brought in and the good name you brought up because of how you handled it. It's ridiculous that this man has to go then prove that no, 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 no. The contract negotiations didn't break down, even though it, it didn't get done. I can respect that position. But in that same breath, he's telling you flat out, no, I'm not leaving. 
y'all want me gone and it's evidence because of this video it, it's really abhorrent on 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 a lot of different sides it's just my live reaction to it i'm going to think through it and process it a, a little bit more y'all let me know what y'all think i just think it's a black eye on on everybody i get the other side of it like oh no since that video that he was cursing and all that other stuff he should have been gone i got that part and if that was the case for me, it should have been right then and there. You don't go a week. You don't go in the middle of recruiting weekend. It just it just makes it look like a clown show. And now this is on ESPN and everybody else is talking about it. It, it, it just should have been handled in a way better way to, in, in my view. So that's just my two cents on it. You all let me know what y'all think. Heritage Sports.